All right, so here's the exercise. I want you to open up your MLS. I want you to go back seven days. I want you to search your local market, the market that you would go on a listing appointment for. So I live in Palm Harbor, Florida. It's Pinellas County. I can search the entire Tampa Bay area, but I'm not necessarily going to drive an hour for a listing appointment. So I want to be uh, more strategic in the in the area that I would search. So let's say I pull 34683, 34684, and 34685. Right, Beth? That would be a market that I'm going to work. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to look at the listings that came off the market as expired listings in the last seven days. I also want you to look at the listings that are showing up as canceled or withdrawn. What's going to happen in this shifting market is you're going to see a lot of people who just take their home off the market. So you're going to see a lot of cancels. You're going to see a lot of withdrawns. And those are an opportunity for you as well as the expired listings. Now, asterisk, uh, based on your local MLS rules, uh, can you solicit a, solicit a listing that came off the market as a withdrawn or canceled? It depends no. on local real estate rules where you work, right, Daryl? Yeah, no, but the drawn out here is still tied to the agent. That was, still tied to the uh, agent. There it is. Okay, so technically, don't want to get myself in trouble in this world that we're living in. If you call a withdrawn, <laughs> you're still interfering with a contract. And you're setting yourself up in Daryl's market. And I think it's probably the same in most markets. You're still setting yourself up for potential legal issues. Gina, what, what is it in North Carolina? It's the same. If it's withdrawn, you don't know if the contract is still active with the listing, but an expired indicates that it is no longer in contract. All right. Do they have canceled listings in North Carolina? Um, we do not have them canceled. Okay. It's uh, withdrawn, expired, and um, oops, I hit the wrong button. Hmm. Temporarily off market, withdrawn. All right, so Toms are definitely off limits. Yeah. If it's temporarily off the market, stay away right. from it, okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so withdrawn. So you might have a listing that's withdrawn that is no longer um, required. They're no longer under contract with the agent, all right? They can relist with another agent. What I would do, Gina, with withdrawns is I would reach out directly to the listing agent, all right? Now, you guys, this is being recorded. You can play it back later. For those of you those of you who are joining us on YouTube, cool, you can use this. I would send them an email that would simply say, hey, Gina, um, this is John Dietz. I'm reaching out to you in reference to your listing at 123 Main Street. Looks like you took it off the market. If that is a listing that you're going to put back active, um, please just disregard this email. However, if you are not planning on putting that mar that home back on the market as an active listing, I would gladly pay you a referral fee of 25% if you referred me to the seller. Hmm. Gina, what was that? <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. I would just call them on the phone because I like to talk to people, but okay, email. That's great. Right. How about you do both? Yeah, follow up, do an email, follow up. Hey, I sent you an email that's perfect all right so copy and paste it and and i would also use that email for expired listings where i can't find the phone number for the seller i would and i would send out as a real estate agent i i would send out i did send out anywhere from 20 to 30 of those a day and i would list an average of two or three homes a month just from that email yes. wow. now i took one listing Beth, you'll know the area in East Lake Woodlands, right? I took one listing and it came from that email. So the seller, the realtor responded back to me, sure, I gladly take a 25% referral fee. Here's the owner's name and number. I responded back, would you please let them know I'm going to call? So it's a warm lead, not a cold lead. So when I call them, Gina, they're not, it's not a typical expired listing phone call. It's, it's a warm call. Now, I got the listing and I sold it, $500,000 home, roughly. They referred me to the next door neighbor who also listed with me, $500,000 home. 
and the next door neighbor bought a home that was about a million dollars. So there's $2 million worth of business that came from one email. Why wouldn't you do that? Did the council listing same thing like saying, hello, blank, this is blank. I'm contacting you in reference to your listing at 123 Main Street. If you're planning on putting that back on the market, please ignore my email. However, if you were not planning on putting that home back on the market, I would gladly pay you a referral fee of 25% if you referred me to the seller. Simple, right? All right, so back to the exercise. I want you to look at how many listings came off the market in the last seven days. Did anybody pull that up while I was talking to you? And for all of you who are watching on YouTube, this is my Survive to Thrive group that meets every day, nine to 9.30. If you want more information on being a part of that group, information's below. Did anybody pull the information? From specific cities right around me, 14. 14? Okay. Anybody? 24. 24. 24. 24. That's a normal month, though. <laughs> so <laughs> the fact okay. that it's seven days kind of blew my mind. Yeah. yeah I just have four. How, how many, Nathan? Just four. Four. Just, yeah. Okay. Hey, okay. John, real quick to what you were saying, I, I feel like, uh, when you write that email also to say, because I believe in redundancy in terms of like really laying things out clearly. I, I which, What do you think about adding, um, I will gladly ref, uh, refer, uh, I will gladly pay you a 25% referral fee in the event that I take the listing and it successfully closes. Because I mean, people are just weird and they, oh, well, you didn't say that. What, what are your thoughts about that? So I thought about that when I did it and Nathan, here's, here's why I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't want to put any potential roadblock in there that would cause them not to respond to me. Now, okay. when they responded, I would send them a referral agreement, just like we do with all other referral agreements that would outline the rules of the referral. And it would say in the agreement, 25% when the property closes. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. So. Here's what I want you guys to do. The market's shifting, yes? Yes. Um, I was on huddle with my team this morning and I heard I did an open house and two people showed up. I did an open house and three people showed up. I did an open house and nobody mm -hmm. showed up. Now, six okay. months ago, would you do, if you did an open house, what would be your expectation? A year ago, if you did an open house, what would be your expectation for the number of people who were going to come to that open house guys was it that long ago that we did open houses and we had 20 30 people lined up outside to get into that home it feels like it was yesterday was it that long ago did you ask them what they do to prepare for the open house or did they expect people to come anyway yeah daryl the, would they all of them are um it's a good it's a good question and all of them are seasoned professionals uh, we only hire seasoned professionals for deeds and deeds real estate consultants and they're doing everything that you do right it's just the market now maybe the market here in the Tampa Bay area is a little bit different than it is in Los Angeles because it feels like the numbers that you and Nathan are reporting are a little bit less than what I'm hearing from Gina and I'm hearing from Beth However, I can tell you it's normal in our market here in the Tampa Bay area today for a home to, to for, for a real estate agent to have an open house and three people come or four people come or nobody comes. And what's happening, guys, is we are moving from a market where there were three buyers for every one listing that was on the market. That was a year ago. So you have three buyers for every listing. You have buyers that are competing over properties that are for sale. And in that market, homes are going to get a lot of attention and they're going to get offers. And they're probably going to get multiple offers because you have buyers that are bidding for the one home that's for sale. The market we're in today, we have three sellers for every one buyer. Now you have sellers that are competing over buyers. Now, when that happens, homes sit and you start hearing things like, I have a listing that's been on the market for 60 days and I'm 
freaking out. I'm not getting any showings. I haven't had any offers. What the heck is going on? Now, as that time goes on, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Homes are going to sit longer and you're going to see homes that aren't selling. It used to be that if you wanted to sell two listings a month, you take three, you sell two. That's not the way it is today. If for every one listing you want to sell today, you're going to have to take three. Take three to sell one. Don't be surprised if that number goes up. In 2006, we carried an active listing inventory of between 10 and 15 homes a month. We be in the DEETS team selling real estate in the Tampa Bay area. And if we took 10 listings a month, eight of them would sell. Within a very short period of time, we went from an active inventory of about 15 homes a month on average to 70 listings on the market. Now, am I saying that's going to happen again? Not necessarily. It could. And if it does, so what? Now what? This is a skill-based market. What I want you to focus on for today is how do you get those listings? Uh, I'm going to role play with a handful of you. We have 14 minutes left. If you would do me a favor so that we don't have downtime, just put that digital hand in the air. And all I'm asking you to do is volunteer to be, to role play with me. And I'm going to go through each one of you that put your hand in the air. And if you don't put your hand in the air, I'm just going to call on you. And I want you to hit me with different scenarios. Try to trip me up. Okay. I'm calling you because you're listing experience. Did the uh, listing expired and you, you received the number from the pa my past agent? No, that was just information that I was giving you before oh, we okay. got into making expired calls on how you could contact those expired listings or withdrawn listings that okay. you necessarily didn't know if you could call or not, or you didn't have a phone number. This is extra, extra material, Nathan. Now we're going to make some expired phone calls. Gina, would you be a seller for me? Absolutely. All right. So ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Gina. Yeah. Gina, this is John Dietz. I, I am a real estate agent with uh, Blank. And I'm just curious, is your home still for sale? No, it's no longer for sale, John. Oh, okay. So Gina, just out of curiosity, if a buyer showed up today with a full price offer, what would you do? Oh, wow. Well, do you have an offer? You know, that's a good question, Gina, and I won't know until I see your home. And mm -hmm. I'd love to pop by and take a look at it so I could potentially bring you that offer. Hey, if I did have an offer, would you want me to bring it to you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So that's exactly why we need to get together. I need 10 minutes, maybe 15 to pop by, uh, ask some questions, take some notes, and then potentially bring you an offer. Well, you could just see the pictures online. Don't you see them? Yeah, you know, the pictures are awesome. That's why I called you. Mm -hmm. However, Gina, have you ever bought a home by just looking at the pictures? Mm, no, I guess not. Yeah, me neither. And neither have any of the buyers that I work with. Yeah. So that's why I need to come by. Would today at four work or would tomorrow at 10 be better for you? Um, I suppose it would be fine tomorrow. That'll work. Okay. Hey, just out of curiosity, if your home would have sold, yeah, where were you moving to? Uh, we were going to move to Florida to be closer to family. Okay. What part of Florida? Um, Tampa. Okay. Tampa's awesome. Are you still interested in moving to Tampa to be close to your family? Yeah, but it doesn't look like we're going to make it by the holidays. So yeah. at this point, we're just going to hold off. Okay. When are you thinking of putting it back on the market? Well, because of the holidays, again, you know, we figured we would just wait till January. Hmm. So, okay. So the plan is to put the home back on the market in January so that you can move to Tampa and be close to your family. Now, mm -hmm. if you're thinking of waiting until January, is it possible that there's a lot of other people who are thinking the same thing? I hadn't considered that. Yeah. You know, in my experience, what I have found is we're going to have a lot more inventory in January and February than we do now. Okay. And my concern for you is, is it going to be easier to sell your home when there's more competition or would it be easier when there's less competition like there is now? Gosh, no one's ever put it to me quite like that. I guess it would be easier to do it now. 
Yeah, okay. And as long as I'm coming over to take a look at your home, if I could show you what I would do to get your home sold for the most amount of money in the least amount of time, would you be interested in seeing how I could do that? Yeah, actually I would. Okay, cool. All right, so role play out. Uh, Gina, great job. Uh, started out by just getting face to face. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm not going to call and qualify, qualify, qualify mm -hmm. and go right into a listing conversation. Right. right now, there's a lot of real estate coaches who would disagree with me, mm -hmm. and I'm fine with that. Um, however, this is how I took 12 listings every month. And my question to those agents who aren't going on those appointments, unless it's a listing appointment, or they're only focused on getting listing appointments, is how many listings are you judging away? And guys, my strategy is I want to get face to face. Here's why. Because on the phone, I'm just another pushy realtor. So are you. Face to face, they're going to like me. And they're going to like you too. Nathan, would you jump in here and role play an expired? Give me a little bit of a different scenario than Gina did. Sure. All right. So may I speak to Nathan? Speaking. Hey, Nathan, John Dietz. I'm a real estate agent with Blank. I noticed your home came off the market. Are you still interested in selling? Oh, my goodness. John, you're like the fifth person that called like in 10 minutes. Wow. Five. That's a lot. So, yeah. Nathan, uh, they're calling you because your home came off the market, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just frustrated, John. You know, I'm just, I don't know. I mean, we want to sell, but I don't know about selling now. Okay. So out of role play, frustrated is a word I want to hear. Frustrated is a word you want to hear. Frustrated equals opportunity. Frustrated means Nathan still wants to sell his home. If he didn't want to sell his home, would he be frustrated? No. So it's good that he's frustrated. You know, Nathan, I get it, back to role play. Uh, I certainly understand the frustration and all these agents that are calling you, they probably just wanna list your home, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they kind of sound alike as well. Yeah, I John, that. what can I do for you though, John? Well, if I had a buyer that was paying full price or if I was a buyer and I showed up today with a full price cash offer, what would you do? Oh, wow, that's, that's I mean, it sounds good, but it just seems like, uh, that's not really what you have. So here's the thing, Nathan. Do you know that I don't have a buyer? No, I, I don't know. And I, my, do you? Okay. I'm closing a lot of homes. I'm selling a lot of homes, Nathan. I won't know if I have a buyer for your home until I see it. But here's, here's my concern for you. If you say no, and by the way, you can. OK, if you say no to meeting with me and then you find out that I was going to sell your home, maybe I sold another home in your neighborhood and you realize you could have sold your home, but you didn't. And you're still mm -hmm. in your home a year from now and it's worth less. Maybe you can't afford to sell it anymore. How would you feel about that? Not good at all. OK, so do you have anything to lose by giving me 15 minutes to pop by, take a look at your home so I could potentially bring you an offer? No, I don't have nothing to lose. I just, you know, again, I'm just frustrated and uh, I wanted to, you know, be out of this house and move on to San Diego where we want to kind of go back home and it's just not happening. So our plans are being delayed. You know, I can see that the asking price is $700,000 and I hear that you want to move to San Diego to be with family. That's awesome, right? And did you get any offers? Uh, we got some cash offers. They were just, I mean, but they were <clears throat> not what we wanted. Okay, so the asking price is $700,000. What did the offers look like? Uh, low sixes. Hmm, interesting. How long have you lived in your home? Uh, since 2005. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So you've got a lot of equity in your house, right? Yeah, I put a lot of work into this home. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, so you know, there's a reason why we put work into our homes. And there's a reason why we put money into our homes. One is to increase the value. The other is to be more competitive in a buyer's market. And, and then the third reason is personal enjoyment. And that's actually reason number one. So 
15 years, longer than 15 years, did you enjoy living in your home? Yeah, we did. Okay. And now you want to move to San Diego. Yes. Okay. But you only want to move to San Diego if you can get 700,000 for your home. Is that correct? Well, I mean, I mean, 690 will be, will be okay as well. Okay. So if you had an offer today of $690,000, you would sell your home. I would consider it. If a buyer showed up at your front door next week for with $690,000 cash, you would sell your home. Yeah, I would I would really really consider it. Got it. And if your home's not on the market, what are the chances that that buyer is going to show up next week with an offer of 690? The, the the chances are slim to none. So Nathan, what's your plan? I don't know. I again, I just I don't know. I'm I'm just going to wait till the holidays over and kind of cool down a little bit cuz I'm, I'm I'm pretty upset right now. I, I appreciate that. If I were you, I would be upset too. Yeah. And you know, when homes don't sell that should have like yours. It usually comes down to one of three reasons, either price, presentation or marketing and looking at the pictures your home is absolutely beautiful so i'm confident it wasn't presentation so we have price and marketing left which of those two do you believe is the reason your home didn't sell well you know i as much as i don't want to probably agree to it it's probably price you know i mean i kind of have my hand my finger on the pulse in terms of like what's going on in the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. I just think that the timing just wasn't what we wanted. So, you know, this market, it seems like it's crazy right now. So potentially it's price. Potentially price. Okay. So one of the benefits of you and I getting together is in addition to taking a look at your home, so I could potentially bring you an offer is we can sit down and look at the market and we can look at a supply and demand analysis to see what your competition looks like. And we can discuss the right strategy to get your home sold so that you can be with your family in San Diego. Hey, by the way, would four o'clock today work or would 10 tomorrow be better for you? Uh, let's go, uh, let's go at four. I, I'm open for four, you know, All come right. on, see if you know what you're doing. All right, so I got the appointment. Thank you, Nathan. You're welcome. All right. All right. I've got, believe it or not, 928. So rather than going to another role play, talk to me. What questions do you have? What were you hearing? John, I um, I love the thought of you talking about this new strategy, you know, reading more of, of the book that, you, you know, we've been reading. Cutting costs is just uh, one of the areas that I really have. Um, it was an eye opener in terms of how much money I'm spending on stuff that I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. And um, I unfortunately, or fortunately, I I, I released my uh, Vulcan 7. That was one of my tools that I said, let me just get rid of this right now. And, um, but I'm, I'm look, I'm, I love that what you're saying right now is I'm pinpointing a way to really get numbers that people would potentially want to pick up their call. Um, it seems like I might not be wasting my time with this new strategy with really, you know, instead of like just going through a lot of other numbers and, and, and going through those, that, that experience, this might be a way to really hit numbers more efficient, efficiently. Yeah, Nathan. Uh, so yes, uh, when we invest money in our real estate business, we want to make sure that the rate of return is uh, a number that we want to get for the money we're spending. Right. And m my number is 10. So if I'm spending $1,000 a month on something, I want a $10,000 return. Now, mm -hmm. the question that I would ask you is, how much money a year does Vulcan 7 cost? How much would you have to earn in order to get a 10-time return? How many homes would you have to sell in order to get that amount of money? 
And if you're getting at least 10 times your money back, then it's a good investment. It's not something that you would eliminate. It's a good investment. Mm -hmm. So here's the other thing. In today's world, making calls uh, might be different for real estate agents than it was 10 years ago. It might be different than it was 15 years ago. Now, I'm not saying that I wouldn't make calls because I would. But in addition to making calls, I'd get out there and I'd knock on doors. I would pick five expired listings every day, 25 a week, and I would go knock on their door. And I would have the same conversation that I'm having right now. Now, maybe it's not five, maybe it's 10, okay? 10, 10 properties a day that came off the market, 50 a week. Yeah. Why not? If your calendar is not filled with appointments, if you if, if if you don't have listing appointments today, then the only thing that you should be doing is more lead generation. If it takes eight hours of lead generation a day in order for you to hit your numbers, then that's how many hours you need to spend in lead generation. We choose success, we choose failure based on our willingness to do what's not comfortable, our willingness to keep going when everything within us is telling us to stop. One more door, one more door. If, if your standard is 20 doors a day and you stop at 19, you're like, screw it, I'm done. You didn't knock on the 20th door. That 20th door could have been a million dollar listing that you didn't get and you don't know it because you didn't knock on the door. What if you had a different standard? What if a different, what if the standard was, I'm going to go on X number of listing appointments every single week or X number of listing appointments every single month and I will not stop until I've scheduled that number. Fearing you guys, aren't I? I got all these faces looking back at me like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. Too much coffee this morning. Guys, here's, here's why we talked about this today. If I'm you, my one thing every day is work on these expired listings. Every time we're faced with a challenge, is this market a challenge? Yes, it is. Every time we we're faced with a challenge, we can either see problems or we can see opportunity. I want you to see opportunity. If I'm a real estate agent, I've been waiting for this day. Holy cow, bring it on. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. Uh, I'm going to hit stop recording.